Elliot from Plaid, and this is Will Dutter. Um, we've recently collaborated on an album together, which we've finally got the final, well, final yeah. got the final product in the last couple of days. Yeah, yeah it's been about four, no, three and a half years in the making. Three and a half years in the making. So uh, yeah, it's nice to have a physical thing at the end of it. So, uh, signify the end. Um, so, um, so yeah, so do you want to talk a little bit about uh, how we made, we did two tracks, so um, Distance and Overcolour. Uh, Overcolour kind of almost feels like that's the centrepiece of the album. Um, that's sort of carried with it, the, it's the biggest piece, so it's like an epic, almost 16 minutes, isn't it? Um, I don't think we just knew when to stop, so um, <laughs> it's... Uh, yeah, I think it's like the backbone of the, the album, definitely. So, uh, I guess we could talk about uh, how we started that. Yeah. Uh, well, bells have featured quite heavily, and uh, you know, I, I mean, throughout Plaid's um, lifetime, we've always come back to bells, and I, I don't know why I keep coming back to that. It's some, something about bells um, yeah. I find very attractive. Um, but actually, for on Overcolor, I tried to do a different type of bell. I, I used uh, um, some software to make physical modelling um, bells, which effectively means each each time you hear a hit, it's the, the computer is doing the maths to work out the acoustics of a physically struck bell. So it's using it's using algorithms that work out the, the various vibrations that are happening on a surface. So that, and that was something that I really developed over colour. Um, in the end, it, it's it's quite immersed in the mix mm. because we added so many layers to it. Mm. But that was a really uh, mm -hmm. something that was specifically done for that, and actually, I'm, I'm glad I did. Because I think, yeah. And distance, we did for a show at Cafe Otto, didn't we? Um, yeah, distance has has existed probably for about four years now, in yeah. some form or another, and then it's evolved and it became yours. Mm. Yeah, you decided to write some piano over it. But yeah, but almost two years ago, exactly, that we yeah. started the collaboration in Slate. That's right, yeah. We went up to uh, Aubra, uh, which, was, which was great. Um, that an amazing, it was like a kill, wasn't it? Like a, a giant kill. Yeah. Um, and that was like four days up there, just to, just space to write. And it's interesting because you, um, let me write it. Like obviously real time piano, you play it, you get to generate some ideas, and then I just seem to remember that it sort of took an hour or two then generating the electronics. And well, it's that thing about composition and it being non real time. A lot of the, if, if I have an instrument I can play, then there is always the potential to jam, but with electronic music, it's, it's, a, it's a non real time process a lot of the time. I have a mouse and a keyboard to play with. Um, so, yeah, I think listening, uh, remembering back, um, you would play something, I would record it, um, and then I would have a play on top. So, you'd have, have, to have to keep busy for an hour or so um, while I did some processing and um, some writing. And it, on paper, it sounds like a torturous um, process, but actually, it works relatively well because during the hour that I'm doing my fiddling, you can. Yeah, yeah. No, it was. Um, I think the main theme of it definitely came away with that. I think we recorded like an early version or the beginning. It has changed, but not. Uh, it's just been like, layered upon rather than the actual thing being changed. So it's um, that was definitely the most useful, uh, useful week to get the process started. Yeah, we got the core ideas for yeah. overcolor done in those four days. Yeah. Yeah. But we first met uh, at Scala, that show, uh, the premiere of the Concerto for Ten Tables uh, in orchestra, I gave a little coffee of, and, um, and you and Andy did the second half, it was a Tick and King crew, uh, like arrangements, wasn't it? Or, yeah. Like four, four or five, wasn't it? Or three or four? I think four, yeah. Um, we were very lucky to have um, versions played by the Heritage. Mm. Yeah, I heard the orchestra and it was, uh, um, yeah, it was good. That was a really good, uh, really good kind of 
way to meet. I think I then pestered you for about, I say, I'd like to say six months, but it's probably about a year. Well, I think I, I, when I first met you, I didn't realise that you were a pianist and a musician. And, um, your, your job on that was, was very much you were organising and promote, helping promote the event and mm. then making sure it happened. So mm. I was actually quite surprised when you said, yes, I'm a, I'm a pianist and let's do some work together. Mm. Um, we <laughs> well, we've been working on, I think a key thing is just how to realise these, the show, the set, the live set, um, not to be a direct kind of copy or recreation of the album. But ultimately, on record, you can produce things so tightly, can't you? Whereas live, you sort of have to think of it in a slightly different way. Um, so I think a lot of it's going to be about how we set set that up. Yeah. Already looking at um, already looking at uh, sort of expanding the players in the live show, possibly using percussionists you know, uh, and sort of sound design around around that. It's almost like maybe taking out some of the, uh, the, the production sort of on the record just because I think it's more that sort of live. Uh, well the area that I'll be performing it in, which I guess is sort of Maybe concert hall sort of bass. I think you want to see people like to see how the sound is being generated. Yeah. I think that's a fundamental thing. People just want to go, oh yeah, that's happening. There. So it will be developing that part of the show. Um, so I think allowing allowing for a little bit of improvisation as well is always good. If you can rework the yeah, even just a bit so that there is a, yeah. something unique for each performance. Yeah. Yeah. It's just the ideal. Yeah. Um, but just the fact that you're playing it live means there will always be variation. Yeah. Um, There's always going to be a, a different mistake in each <laughs> performance. So, yeah. yeah, I think to, to, for it to sound exactly like the album is always a bit upsetting when you go and hear something, unless you absolutely love the album so much and it's, mm. it's an exact replica. Um, mm. I think to, to inject something new um, is, yeah. is why we're really So I think the first show. The launch is going to be the 20th of June um, at the BFI in the Blue Room. And then from there, hopefully, the world.